Greetings, everyone. I'm James Milan. This is the DEI update, and we have a new face, well, kind of new face to introduce to everyone. Uh, we last saw Teresa Marzilli a couple of updates ago when she got introduced by Jill as the third member or a, another member of our DEI department. DEI, of course, as you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And Teresa is our community engagement coordinator. Um, Teresa, very much welcome to the DEI update. Well, thanks so much for having me, James. Yeah, I'm looking very forward to future conversations with you as well. Uh, but for today, uh, let's just let people know that we'll, we've will we got a couple of projects to talk about um, that DEI is working on, and then we want to get an update on the equity audit. But as I've already mentioned, um, this is your first time doing this. And so if you can let um, our audience just give us a little background on, well, what is your job? What does Arlington's DEI Community Engagement Coordinator do? Definitely. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a brand new role for the town. When I started in June, uh, after completing my MSW at BC, uh, this was the first time this, this had been done. Um, so it's really an exciting time. We're really, you know, creating something pretty cool. Uh, so the goal of the role is to help the town build stronger connections with the residents, especially those who have been historically underrepresented, um, you know, as well as building bridges with our community organizations. So our ultimate goal at the end of the day is to co-create a community where everyone is heard, respected and protected. That looks like in the day to day, like helping different departments strategize for equitable engagement, engagement, uh, producing community events like the Lunar New Year, um, you know, leading different efforts around language access and civic engagement. I really love the role. I get to work on a lot of different projects. Uh, the planning department pulled me in to work on MBTA communities. And, you know, I get to think about like our systems and our policies and, of course, spending time with residents, getting to know them and listening to their ideas and concerns. Well, one thing I can uh, assure you, as I'm sure you've already figured out, uh, there's nobody in your department who has to worry about being bored. And I am <laughs> sure yes. that, that is the case for you as well. Uh huh. So speaking of community events, we did first meet you at the Lunar New Year, which, of course, was a great success. Um, but I know that there are a couple of other events uh, for you to tell us about today. So in whatever order you'd like, please proceed. Sure. I guess I'll start with the Resources and Connections Fair. Um, that's happening at Town Hall on Sunday, April 30th. It'll be from 12 to 3 p.m., um, we have about 20 different organizations and departments coming together. We'll have food and different activities. Uh, the idea really grew out of something that not only our department, but like other folks in the community, you know, Susan Dorson and I sort of brainchild it together, Susan being from Arlington Eats. Uh, there's this idea that like folks aren't always aware of all the townhouse to offer. Um, to support residents. So we're hoping this is gonna be a really fun chance for, for people to build those connections. Um, so I guess I can talk a little bit too about who's gonna be there. You can get a full mm -hmm. list from the website or the uh, calendar, but you know we're gonna have different youth programs like the Boys and Girls Club, um, Arlington Soccer Club, Community Connections. We have folks that teach English classes and do continuing education stuff, um, employment assistant, We'll have uh, the swap shed from mm -hmm. DPW. So that's like just a bunch of different household goods. Um, we have mental health providers going to be there. The libraries will be there. Different planning uh, efforts and, you know, resources for newcomers, resources for folks with disabilities. Uh, it's just a pretty wide list. But I think if folks in the community hear about this and they're a part of an organization that we could have missed, they should reach out because there's still some time. Um, you have me thinking actually about ACMI, but we'll leave that till for conversation. Oh yeah, we got to have an <laughs> ACMI booth there, James. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to, to be determined uh, after we finish our update here. Um, and on uh, the topic of the update, um, you know, something I have spoken with Jill specifically about for hmm, a good long while now is the equity audit that uh, was at different stages of the process at different times. 
but it has been it was completed and it's been recently released. What uh, how, what what update do you have to share with us? Yeah. So yeah, as you mentioned, and as folks who have been familiar with the process know, we wrapped up in January. We had our community presentation, and kind of since then, we've been working internally to like take apart each recommendation and think about how we can implement it. Um, for folks who are familiar with some of those recommendations, they'll remember that community engagement and language access were really like in integral recommendations. So I'm really excited that that my job is to lead up both of those efforts. Um, because we keep hearing from staff and you know different residents how needed the work is. I can get a little bit into the language access project that we're working on that ties into one of those recommendations. So uh, for the past year plus, we've been working with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and four other communities to kind of understand different components of a language access plan. And you know, we're thinking about, you know, not just access, but like a sense of language justice for everyone's right to communicate and to understand and be understood in their preferred language is what's centered. So um, right now we're at a stage where MAPC is trying to connect with community members to learn about their experiences with language access in Arlington. Um, we're actively seeking uh, folks who speak ASL, Haitian Creole, Vietnamese, Spanish, and Portuguese, but really anyone's welcome to take part. Um, so after that portion wraps up, we'll, you know, finish this project in the fall and then hopefully have some guidelines for how to do a comprehensive language access plan for the town. Um, it's a great idea. Um, definitely <laughs> responsive uh, to what you've heard from the community because I have heard the same thing and I'm sure uh, that there's going to be a, 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 um, a willing uh, that you will find many. I hope you will find many willing participants in the forums and thereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, anything that we have missed? I'm sure there's things we're missing. <laughs> we just do so much in this division, but um, for today, we'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy that I got a chance to come on and chat with you, James. Thank you for having me. And we are very, very happy to uh, welcome you to the DEI update, as I mentioned. Um, and thanks a lot for sharing uh, yet another wealth of information with us today. Um, I have been speaking with Teresa Marzilli. She is, as I mentioned before, uh, the Community Engagement Coordinator as part of the DEI division, uh, that's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we really appreciate Teresa's time, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing her again, as I mentioned earlier as well. Uh, for today, we will let her go and get back to her work, and we will let you go as well. But we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.